Super Coach and Fantasy Sports Show. You are now listening to the Inside Fantasy Sports Podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast, AFL edition, brought to you by Insight Podcast Network. I'm your host, the Super Coach Hawk, Rob Kennedy, back in the box. It's been held up by my good friend, the big horse, Mickey Dell. Thanks for your efforts, first and foremost. And second of all, how are you doing? G'day, brother. Welcome back. Yeah, good. Um, you probably missed it, mate, but due to popular demand by the Twitter sphere. I've had to change my uh, handle name because no one could find me. So let's see underscore big horse it is now. Um, let's start off by giving our sponsors the standard squeeze a bit of a shout out. They've been awesome to us of late and uh, they've noticed an uptick of people uh, bringing up our name. So continue on, guys. Insight 15, jump on the website, drop that code in for 15% off all your goodies. I've got my little sipper cup here. Robbie's got his there. Got our hats, got our gear. Fantastic bunch of people. Support the people that support us. Love it. It's a great product. And not only have we held on to them as a sponsor and the giveaways because they've been good to us, but it's just a good product. It's as simple as that. We've had to fend off everybody else with a stick, mate. We're staying with them because they've been great. Um, and that we encourage everyone to get on and use that Insight 15. I did notice the handle change. I didn't notice when it happened because all I have to type in, I'm lucky enough, I only have to type in B and you're right at the top of the list for me, mate. So I've never had to put yeah. that little number one digit, but I must say, very good change. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. It, it needed to happen. So <laughs> to everyone in the world, you're welcome. Hit me up. <laughs> SC mate, Horse on that? Twitter. We've got an exciting, slightly different show today. Like, obviously, we bring all the best Super Coach content, mate. You've been dropping some news on the Twitter sphere as well before even Channel Seven does. So, big shout out to you. But today, as we've talked about, we're getting closer to the end of the season. We want to make sure that we talk AFL because we've got some AFL diehard listeners. So, we've decided to name this show: Resign, Relocate, or Retire. Now, we've got a list of all the players that are out of contract at the end of this season. We are only going to start with Adelaide to Hawthorne as there's quite a bit of content to get through. Talk to us a little bit about it. I'm not going to claim this. This was your baby and I love it. Resign obviously is the obvious one. That's We're thinking that the club should re-sign them. Relocate. What's your, what's your definition of a relocate? So relocate for me is whether someone is or not under contract and we believe a change of scenery might be best for them, not just from a super coach point of view, but from an AFL career playing point of view. Beautiful. So we might be looking at trade value. They might have trade value. I mean, Sean Darcy sort of one that's talked about things like that. Obviously, he's not out of contract, so he won't be on this list. But players like that, they might have some trade value or we think it might be best for them from a super coach standpoint. And mm -hmm. retire... We're looking, at it, we're looking at it in two different ways. What are you seeing with retire, mate, other than the obvious? Retirement is your classic Cunnington, Luke Shuey, who have been loyal servants of the AFL, where unfortunately it's just time, where one name that I will bring up later will be Daniel Rich. We called that when he got dropped from the Brisbane team and hasn't been able to make his way back in, and since then they've been playing better. But it could also be your 20, 24-year-old, however young it may be, that isn't cut out for AFL footy. So we're going to dig in. Everyone that's off contract this season, we will go through, regardless of whether you've heard them or not, and we will give our viewers the insight, the inside knowledge as to what potentially or what we think should happen. Now, we always drop our podcasts pretty quickly after we record them, but just to be mm -hmm. you know, open and transparent, this is obviously a recorded podcast and a recorded episode. Things may have transpired since this drops and people listen to it. So if you do hear something and we got it wrong and it's already happened in the news, eh, too bad. We move on. That's right. Let's dive in. So we start with Adelaide. We're going to go alphabetical order from Adelaide to uh, Hawthorne on today's episode, and we will do a part two, which will be the rest of the teams. Sure. I'm going to give you a blurb on some players. I think some are going to be very commonly well-known players, and some are obviously going to be a little bit more unknown. Similar to this player, Andrew McPherson. I've done a few little notes, and we've got a few little help here. 24-year-old defender. I've heard he struggled with a quad injury. Uh, he was solid in 2021 and he, he actually played 18 games in 2021, which is interesting for me. Um, you know, I haven't heard too much about the player. Hampered with knee injuries, hampered with soft tissue injuries. Um, they reckon that there's a, a space for him if Tom Duday wasn't in the team. But uh, mm. what's your verdict there for, a, for an Andrew McPherson? Uh, Resign, relocate or retire? 
I think it's a re-sign for Adelaide. The reason why I know of McPherson is because I bought him in as a rookie in 2021 in Supercoach and followed him quite closely. Not too bad. 18 games there. Hasn't really played too much of late, but he's your, he's your classic third tall type of player that if Dodie retires, moves on, whatever it might be that uh, he'll do, uh, this is the perfect guy for Adelaide to bring in in order to run that role. You've got to remember also that Murray has gone down with an ACL and some of their bigger stocks have some long-term injuries. So I think for McPherson to hang around for at least one more year, that's a smart play by Adelaide. Yep. From everything I'm reading there, if somebody's playing 18 games at a certain period of time, and there's just one player in his way, then he's clearly a chance to get games if someone goes down. So it's a one-year contract for me and, uh, and move on from there. Yep. Now, this is an interesting one, and people will know this name, especially in Supercoach land, Jackson Haitley. Uh, so he came across from GWS, obviously had a pretty good season there as well from a you know playing standpoint, but probably more so a super coach standpoint, if we're being honest. Um, you know, he's only tallied 15 games over the three seasons with the Adelaide Crows, including just the one this year. Mm-hmm. Verdict on a Jackson Haitley. Overrated delist. Yeah, and yeah, I think was, I think like yeah. I, like I kind of just hinted at before. I think you're right. I think from a super coach standpoint, people got excited, and I reckon some of them in their pre-draft maybe put him there in their first team. But um, yeah, what what have you seen? Like you just think he just can't cut the mustard because he was decent at GWS. He was okay. He was he was okay, but he's almost like a Paddy Dow type of player without the inside hardness that Paddy Dow brings. So he's he's a bit light on for an inside mid, which is where he dominates, or not so much dominates, but where he likes to play. I just don't think he's got the, the size to cut his trade and what he's good at at AFL level. So, unfortunately for me, it's a D-list. So, shout out to our friend Phil. He loves to pull us up whenever we get pronunciations wrong on this show. And I think he's a bundle of knowledge, our mate Phil. Um, James Borlas is what I'm assuming the pronunciation is here. It is. Uh, category B rookie. Uh, uh, set to make his AFL debut this weekend. Because he of played. Adelaide's Warriors, yep. and he did. So he played. So this was just past. He did play his game last week. I didn't see it. I didn't watch their game. I, as if people know, they didn't see me in the pot. I was away spending time with family. What's People are saying that he's possibly the cover for Nick Murray's ACL. So does that mean a one-year deal? Is he a re-sign to you? He's a next-gen uh, pick that they've bought through. And I'm surprised you didn't see it, mate, because he scored over 100 in his first game of AFL footy, playing down back for Adelaide. 18 touches, nine marks, and looked right at home. That's a two-year deal for me. That's a re-sign for sure. What that says to me is I'm extremely proud of myself that I actually did switch off for the weekend and spend some time yeah. with my family. I missed 100. So if he got over 100, mate, give yeah. him two years. Give him two years. But, uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll watch this space and, and watch him closely this weekend. Now, we have a few names in a row here, names that we know extremely well. Matt Crouch, Paul Seedsman. Rory Sloan. So let's start with Matt Crouch. And he's sort of revived his, I say revived his career. He's been starting to get some more games. He's been a little bit on the outer, probably a great replacement player that you can have there. Um, You know, he's only played 30 senior games though since 2020. What's your take on a Matt Crouch? Relocate. We see that he's still got value in the AFL for the inside mid that he is. Yeah, he's not great by foot, but he's he's a Tom Mitchell type of player. He's, He's in and under... He, he likes the hard ball. He's not good on the outside, but we've seen what Collingwood have been able to do with Tom Mitchell and, and use his areas of specialty to benefit their team. I think a team that are in the window, St Kilda, I think alongside uh, Brad, they'd benefit from someone like this. Uh, Essendon for us, like all our inside mids are small. Parrish, Merritt, all these guys. He's a bigger bodied inside mid. I'd love him there. So there are teams that could utilise his services. So he won't stay at Adelaide. It's going to be a relocate, and I think he'll be at a Victorian club next season. I like your Essendon call. Like you and I don't argue very much on this show. Maybe we should do it more to get it we, we more should. entertaining and we can have some <laughs> yeah. Twitter videos from it. But I'll disagree with St Kilda. I don't like the St Kilda call. I think they'll be 2-1 paced. I don't think Brad and Matt work well together, and I think they've proved that they don't work well together. I don't think they're great two-way runners together. But I do like the Essendon call. That that makes a little bit more sense to me. I see it as either him going to someone who's in a bit of a window. I might throw a crazy one out there and say, do Fremantle need to go with somebody a little bit bigger body, they considering do. that they're struggling in that area as well? Or does a club that maybe just needs a bit of veteran presence? So there's a few options there, and I think he has value, and therefore you might get you know, 
something reasonable if he does his trade. And yeah, I think he has to relocate. I think you're spot on. <laughs> uh, Paul Seisman. Unfortunately, we know that Seisman's had to possibly pull the pin on his career. Um, you know, he was third. He's been third in their best and fairest in 2021. Um, and he pretty much hasn't graced the field since that time. What a quality player. I've enjoyed watching him throughout his career. Premature retirement? Has to be. Yeah, there's for some people, offer everyone, there's life after footy. But for some people, they just can't fathom the thought of not playing football anymore. And it's it's been a part of them for so long that they get lost after footy. I don't see Seedsman as one of those people. So I think with you know, life and wanting to have some form of body left and being able to do stuff after he retires, I think he'll be smart about it and, and prematurely retire. So Rory Sloan, a bit of a fan favourite. Even as a non-fan, you're a bit of a fan of Rory Sloan. Yeah, um, I like him. Kind of epitomises everything you like about a bloke and, and a football mm-hmm. player. He's come out and said that he would not retire and that they'd have to delist him to get rid of him. I'm intrigued on your opinion here, and then I'll give mine after you. Where does he sit with you? And to everyone listening along, we haven't given each other our answers yet, so it always comes as a no. bit of a surprise. Resign, relocate, retire. What do you do with Rory Sloan? I'm re-signing on a one-year deal. I think there's always room for a mature player of this sort of stature at a club. The, the fact that he's played his whole career at Adelaide, yes, they're not in a premiership window, but Players like this don't come around every day. He's loved by everyone. He sets the tone on the track. He's got high standards for himself. I, I think it's a smart move to keep him around for one more year. And he, has, he hasn't looked out of place this year. He hasn't. For me, it's you can't keep both. So Crouch has to go. If Crouch stays, you have to make a choice here. I think you're now starting to hinder some speed and some other players to go through that midfield. I think you've got to mm-hmm. give opportunity. I really like this Crows list. I think their nervous point is who takes Taylor Walker's spot when Taylor Walker doesn't exist anymore. And what does that look like in a premiership window? When is that coming about? I actually think they're a dangerous football team when they're up and about. But you can't have Dawson, Crouch, Sloan, all of those guys there in the midfield. I think you've got to make a move on someone. Um, And sometimes you've got to make the tough calls, but... You're right. It's not going to be Rory Sloan. He's going to play one more year. He's the prodigal son. He could do no wrong. Mm. Um, Shane McAdam, uh, obviously another forward who's been hampered by injuries this year. He's only played four games to date. Um, does have an ability and a bit of an X factor. He does. Shane McAdam. Resign, multi-year deal. He, he's exciting. And when he's up and going, it just makes their forward line look so much dangerous or much more dangerous, sorry. I compare him a little bit to a Tyson Stengel, but with more aerial ability. So, yeah, for me, he's hanging around on a multi-year deal. Do you try and sign him on that multi-tier, multi-year deal, but obviously do it for less cash because you kind of put the injury component on it? So you're nearly a Absolutely. chance to get a bit of a bargain from a decent player because of it. Use it to your advantage. Yeah. Yep. Um, Tariq Newchurch, uh, NGA signing 2021, um, yet to make a senior debut. Um, not too much to talk about here. You know, Adelaide's forward line is currently stacked with the likes of Rankin and, and players like that. Is this an obvious response? It is. See ya. We are, we are going to... Wait, Put a line we're through him. We're going to retire. So we're retiring yeah. slash D-list. Yeah, like that. Yeah. I nearly had to work out which one of those. I was like, retire or stick a line through <laughs> Questioning our show there for a second. Yeah. My bad, mate. Uh, which one we talked about earlier, Tom Duday. Um, you know, for me, he's a quality player. Um, you know, he's obviously had his injuries and things like that as well. But I think this is an obvious answer as well for Tom Duday. Yeah, multi-year deal. If there's murmurs that he may be on the move. So let's see where this plays out first. But coming off a second ACL, I believe, the yep. the market's going to be thin, I reckon. The, qu- the tough one's going to be is what... Adelaide offer because defenders are and good defenders are you know high commodity at the moment. I think a few you know a few draft picks haven't gone quite right in the defenders ranks. We know some defenders are on the move. Uh, Mackay from North Melbourne. We know Essendon are keen to look for some defenders. People are looking for defenders. Hawthorne didn't quite get it right with Granger Barras. What does that look like? Um, so it could be one of them that they don't quite have the cash to give him what he wants and someone comes over the top. Now, if he gets overpaid, mm-hmm. then he's on the way. But I think Adelaide just have to be smart with what they pay him and, and offer him the right amount. You've got to, you can't overpay players. No. Um, 
Tyler Brown. Uh, Tyler Brown was offered a lifeline, obviously, by the Crows. Um, it was a supplement player. Um, he played round one, but hasn't been since then. Um, just looks like he's a bit of a, a sandful player at the moment. Retire. And that is Adelaide, mate. We move on and uh, you can yeah. take the microphone for yeah, Brisbane. Let, let's move on to Brisbane. So as we know, Brisbane are in their premiership window. So we may have to be a little bit more vicious in who's retiring, who's relocating and who you're going to re-sign because we know with a top-tier team, their salary cap's going to be at their max. So we'll start off with Blake Coleman, the brother of Kitty Coleman back there, Caden Coleman. He's yet to make an AFL debut, drafted as number 24 pick in the 2020 draft, but doesn't turn 21 till later this month. Have you heard much about him? I have a little bit. I've heard he's got really – I know you just sort of said it, so I'm stealing the words out of your mouth. I've heard he's got some serious dash. I think there's just not a spot there at the moment. So I don't think that's of any fault of his own. I think it's just the quality of the side that they are. Um, so for me, it's you'd be looking to at least put him just on a one-year deal, keep him there again if a spot opens up and you can see some more potential there. But, yeah, as a as a 24 pick, um, yet to turn 21, I've heard there's potential there. Keep him on the list um, and see what you can get out of him. Gets a re-sign, a one-year deal yep. and see whether he can break in. Uh, Carter Michael. Signed a one-year deal at the end of last season after breaking through for his first senior game in 2022. Hasn't featured this year because we know of the, I guess, the assets that Brisbane have and the depth that they have. You think he's retiring, relocating or resigning with them? I think it might be a, a, a retirement or a D-list, whatever we want to call there. I think he's just – I think Brisbane – have you still have to make some moves. You have to D-list some players. You have to retire or move on some players and make that call. I don't think he's got any value to move, um, so it's easy to sort of say relocate, but uh, maybe he gets an opportunity somewhere else. Brisbane's a good list, so if you've been on their list and, and, and had a bit of a go, maybe he's got something there. Um, so it's a relocate or, or yeah, retire D-list off your list. I think you've got to make that move. Yeah, for sure. You need to. We need to remind viewers that you need to make space on your list for 100%. your next draft picks that are coming through, potential free agents that you're going to bring in. So sometimes you have to be ruthless here. Conor McKenna, or Conor McGregor, as Justin would like to call him, has played almost every game at Brisbane since joining them earlier this year. Only 27 still for me. Multi-year deal for you? Yeah, multi-year deal. I think he slotted in perfectly. I think he fits in well. I think him and Wilmot have started to work it out. Wilmot's definitely moved a bit further up the ground as well. I think at the start, everyone was kind of trying to find their way a little bit. Um, but I think Conor McKenna is one of the – I nearly go to say McGregor now because we make the joke so much. Yeah, <laughs> McKenna's, McKenna's definitely one of those that's finding his place in the team and, and has a permanent role. So, look, I'm giving him – two, nearly even three years, um, depending on what the cash looks like. Multi-year um, re-sign for sure. Yep. Yeah, good. Next one, I've spoken a lot about him, but I'm keen to know your thoughts. Daniel Rich, 275 gamer, got pulled out of the team earlier this year, hasn't been seen since. I think he should retire. Your thoughts? This is one of those really tough ones because I'm, I've am i talked about this position before as well. You've got to be a little bit ruthless sometimes with the halfback position. He's lost his speed. He's still got his kick, but he's lost his speed. And they've got players now that can start to play. We just mentioned McKenna. There's Coleman up back there as well. Wilmont could float between the wing and the back line again. He's, he's now kind of taking someone's spot. Um, and I don't think you need him as backup. I think you've got to make that move. And look, maybe he's one of those ones that could possibly relocate. How old is he now? Oh, he's like, in his thirties. Yeah. Okay. So look, does does someone does a does a Gold Coast or someone take him just to maybe just some maturity? But yeah, I think it could be a retirement for Daniel Rich. And and if so, hell of a career and hell of a uh, super coach, hell of a super coach player as well. Absolutely has been. Uh, there's a lot of tread on those tires though. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens with him. Uh, Darragar Joyce, former Saint, played five games for Brisbane 2023 after joining the club in the preseason. Offers good depth for their back line, but, yeah, what do you think? Like I've heard about this player and I know that he gives them depth. I'm trying to think of their full list. I didn't I didn't fully write their whole back line down in front of me. I've talked more about their dashes. We know they've had some we've had some struggles. They've had struggles with key defenders. So being a key defender, maybe it is that one year deal if he's their backup. If he's their go-to backup, one year deal, 
or it's or it's delist. But yeah, we know Brisbane have struggled with having key defenders, so maybe he is the guy they need to to have as their backup. So I, I'll go with I'll go with one year re sign. Okay, for for me, it's a retire. I don't think he's good enough at AFL level. Dane, I'm going to call him Nutsy. That's his new nickname for me. Zorko <laughs> complains about his nuts being bruised. Gets someone suspended, then magically is well enough to play. Good on you, Nutsy. You flog. Anyway, he's 34 <laughs> years of age, coming to the end of his career, but still easily in Brisbane's best team. Unless he opts to retire, it's another one-year deal for Zorko. What do you reckon? Yeah, Zorko's back for one more year. I'll call him the squirrel. I'll go with squirrel. Squirrel. Hey, what an interesting Nutsy player. Squirrel, I, same I, thing. I must yeah. admit, I I I enjoy watching Zorko up and about. Um yeah, you've, you've got to give him a one-year deal. They're still in their window and, and when he's up and about. But this is why you've got to make the moves on Rich and players like that So because he can float between the back line and the forward line. He's versatile. He, he's shown that he can still play in any position. Mm-hmm. Here's an interesting one. Devin Robertson. He's only 22, but he's only played nine times in 2023, including multiple times as sub. He's from WA. He's not the type of person for me that would likely request a trade, but he's too good to be sitting at VFL level. Yeah, I might be showing my black and gold here from being a WA person, but he's underutilized at this club. I think he's a very good player. He's he's yes. like the Riley West of Brisbane for me. Like whenever I see him as the sub or gets dropped for a game, I don't understand because every time I see him on the field, he deserves to be on an AFL ground. He looks, he looks good. Mm. So look... He's one that West Coast should probably go after for sure. I think Brisbane haven't done themselves any favours by not playing him much this year, so his value might not be too high. But, yeah, I think you said you can't see him requesting a trade. I don't think he'll do it verbally, like openly. I think he'll yeah. laugh. I think he'll come back to WA, and I think he gets a game week in, week out when players like, I'm not saying he's a Hearn, but Hearn's now retired and things like that. He's got a spot in that West Coast back line for sure. Good day. We'll go through a few of these a little bit quickly because yep. there's quite a few with Brisbane. Harry Sharp, 20-year-old, 10 appearances this year, yet multi-year deal. Multi-year deal. Kyle Lohman, he's, he's a bit of the energizer bunny for them at the moment. Uh, I'd re-sign him. Re-sign or relocate for me. I think you give him an offer, um, but he may look elsewhere. I reckon Brisbane Brisbane just have too good of a list. He may look elsewhere. And and Harry Sharp might be the same. They're going to have to actually give him some coin and maybe a bit of reassurance that he's going to get more games. Uh, these two, I'll put them both together. Marcus Adams, who's been a, a loyal servant of the AFL community, Western Bulldogs and Brisbane for a long time. 30 years old, he's out of contract. And the Kaya Cockatoo Collins, former top pick for Geelong. What do you think with these two? Yeah, Marcus Adams just hasn't looked the same. I think he's one that you've just got to make a move on now and and uh, and retire. And yeah, Nakai Cockatoo just just hasn't quite come through the way that he thought he would. He's a he's a retire D list for me, especially with Jackson Payne coming through. That's pretty much shown the door for Marcus Adams. Man. You t- took the words out of my mouth, mate. Absolutely. Uh, Reese Matheson, interesting. The shotgun boy. He's um he's quite good. Like. Between the years and his his actions, he's a, he's a bit of a douchebag, isn't he? But he can find the footy. He's a very good AFL footballer when he gets a crack. He reminds me of Keys from Adelaide. Like he just he's not the cleanest by foot, but just he gives you effort and energy, and you know has a bit of see you in the Northern Territory in him and stuff. You know, yeah. like he's just got a bit of that. And yeah, look, I'd try and re- I'd relocate. I'd relocate. Yep. yep. Someone will pick him up. Uh, Ryan Lester, 30-year-old, he's come on at the back end of this year, showed that he's got real value as a backman. So for me, that's a, that's a re-sign. Yeah, premiership window, re-sign. And Tommy Fullerton, their backup ruckman from last year uh, since the emergence of Darcy Ford, along with the big O, Oscar McInerney. He hasn't really had a crack this year, but has been playing really well in the VFL. Relocate. Yeah, spot on. Relocate. Yep, beautiful. All right, so we've gotten into two teams. We've got Carlton next. Yep. What do you got like for us? Speed. I like your speed there. We know people love to listen to a podcast, but we will try and up the ante a little bit. I, I, I did look through this list. I was like, I forgot how big it is. We'll, uh, but yeah. Carlton have some interesting ones. Let's pump on. Um, David Cunningham, um, obviously been a little bit injury prone, clearly in Carlton's best 22. Um, for me, it's a, a re-sign for sure. 
re sign multi year deal. I really like him. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Markbank, I think he's in the same boat for me. Um, again, I think he's in their best side. Yes, he's had some setbacks as well, but I think when he's fit and up and about in their best 22. Yes, he's one ACL away from retirement, though. So given his injury history and the way he's been, it's a one year deal. Yeah, one year deals. And I think he'll happily take that. He knows he's in their team and maybe has a bit of a bonus scheme if he uh, gets more games on the, on the ground for sure. Mm hmm. This is probably the biggest talking point of the podcast. I reckon he's right up there. Um, Jack Silvani. Um, we know Tom DeConing's done his re-sign. Um, look, he's starting to look a bit more up and about. But, you know, is Silvani actually in Carlton's best 22? Maybe, yes. But can they offer him the money that he's going to look for? No. Relocate. He's going to find another club. And without the asset of his old man's name lingering around, I think he'll really excel as a footballer elsewhere. That's going to be the tough one, isn't it? Because he's going to have some sedimental value to that club. And it's going to be a big call, especially if Carlton offer him a deal. For him to then go elsewhere, when we look into sport where they don't talk about the type of money that they actually get, it's not like the NBA where we know what the contracts are. For him to actually say no to a deal and go and take another one, surely we're going to have to hear what the two monetary amounts were to justify why he's moved from, you know, the son of a God, basically. Mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see. I'll, I'll be watching that one with, with good intention. Uh, Josh Honey, uh, small forward, um, you know, shown a bit of dash at certain times, not really taken to the AFL level much. D-list. Yep. See you, mate. Couldn't agree. Yeah. Couldn't agree. Lachlan uh, Fogarty, he's one that's come on. I think he's shown a little bit more versatility. Uh, he's gone on ball a little bit, shown a bit of excitement in the forward line as well. Um, I'm actually, I know the the stats sort of say a one-year deal. I'm, I'm kind of inclined to give him a two-year deal for me. Yeah, he's a depth player there in Carlton's forward line. Motlop's really coming on. So, yeah, we'll go two-year deal. Definitely hang around, re-sign. Two-year deal, a little bit less cash. I'm all good with that. Uh, Lockie Plowman, uh, 125 games for Carlton since he moved from GWS at the end of 2015. Has fallen out of favour, though, with Michael Voss lately. He hasn't been quite getting the game. Um, game times as you like. And there's a lot of quality back there. Nick Newman, Jim Cotter, Lockie Cowan, uh, Zach Williams, Caleb Marchbank. What do you do with Lockie Plowman? Yeah, and then throw in Saad, Brody Kemp, uh, Weedering. There's no place for him. Unfortunately, he'll be retiring. Uh, Mitch McGovern, always an interesting one as well. Finds his way when he knows it's contract time. We know he can go both ends of the ground. He's got a bit of versatility both way. Plays a little bit like his brother. What do you do with Mitch McGovern? He's 29 Re years old now. Yeah. Re-sign him on a lesser deal. I think he's been pretty good for him, especially over yep. the past six weeks. Now, the man they touted to be the next Scott Pendlebury, a Paddy Dow, um, obviously been massively named as the sub a few times, struggled to get a game, albeit that he was killing it in the VFL from everything that I've heard over here in WA. Um, has come on the ground, always looked quite good. Adam Chera just seems to be the one that's really stepped up and taken that spot in the midfield. So what do you do with Paddy Dow? We'll see him at the North Melbourne Football Club next year. Relocate. Oof, mark that down, the 28-minute mark and 45 seconds. North Melbourne Footy Club, wouldn't be a bad spot for him. Wouldn't be a bad spot at all. Yep. Well, for those that don't know and people that are listening in, his dad played at North Melbourne. Yeah, fun fact. There's, I like there's it. ties there. That's why you're the stats and the fact man, mate. That's what we like. Uh, Sam Durden, uh, you know, brought in as a key defender for a bit of depth. Durden's been unable to get a look in this season. Um, you've only got 44 spots on your list. What are you doing with uh, Sam Durden. No, nah, he's gone. Retire. The notes, a lot of the notes are that he might get re signed as a rookie, um, back yeah. as a rookie. But um, yeah, look, that doesn't scream might... out to me value at all, at all though. No. I bloody hate that rule. I think they need to look at the rookie list thing. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't have players of a certain age going to rookie list. It kind of just defined, just taking the Mickey, if you ask me, why yep. you brought it in. Uh, last but not least, Sam, uh, Sam Phillip. Uh, he was one of Silvani's. Speculative first round selections hasn't had a clean run at it at all. Um, he's only played two games since being drafted in 2019. It's a clear retire D list. It is, unfortunately. And look at us move on to the Collingwood Football Club, everyone's favourite club. <laughs> Can the pies? I'll just start to color. I'll color in my other big uh, tooth here, mate, just so I can fit in. There you go. So <laughs> Collingwood. 
They're, they're very much premiership favourites for me at the moment. Absolutely. They're playing good footy. Yeah, they had a bit of a slip up against Carlton, but they look good, even against Hawthorne. But every team goes through phases each year. We've seen that Collingwood's best Absolutely. is better than anyone else. So if they get it together, it's like I, I'm an Essence supporter, so I don't like saying it, but they are clearly the best team when they're up and going. If it wasn't First for my son all... falling over and splitting his head on some stairs, it would have been the most enjoyable Saturday afternoon for me watching the Hawk get up against the Pies. But, uh, yeah, no, I went and spent five hours in emergency. <laughs> what a Saturday, are they? So, <laughs> Aiden Begg, the first one, 20-year-old Ruckman. What are you doing with him? Like they've got Darcy, they've got Cox, they've got Frampton. Are you keeping him around? For me, everything I read, without knowing too much about him, a lot of people are saying just a one-year deal um, and he'll take it just to make sure they have that backup. I think he might be good for their VFL side. I think Frampton, actually, they still want to have us that backup in that key position spot. Um, and then they've got, you know, you've got to have that third, you've got to have that third genuine ruck on your list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one-year deal for me. Arlo Draper hasn't debuted for Collingwood, don't know much about him, uh, given the way that, how dice of the AFL uh, list management is for me to retire. Yeah, see, I'm going to put him in again. Like from everything that I've read, I've done a bit of done a bit of research. I don't know him again as a player, but Collingwood. Everyone's got to remember Collingwood's in that window. I know we said from Brisbane. Brisbane's in a different space at the moment. We're also talking about players who are only 20 years old. So mm-hmm. 20 years old, still showing some potential. These are the ones that you just see if you can rejuvenate for one more year. You might even put on your rookie list, whatever it looks like. But I've heard he's got a bit of dash and a bit of go. Um, so look, you got to keep them on your list because at some point, Pendlebury, um, side bottom, these players are going to go. So you've got to mm-hmm. have players ready to come in, and and maybe he's one of those on a bit of a wing or a flank, uh, a flank option, from what I hear. Uh, small forward Cooper Murley, D list. Haven't heard. Yeah, this is one that I haven't heard anything exciting about. So it's a retired D list for me. Yep. Yep. Uh, Josh Carmichael, interesting one. Played a few games for Collingwood last year. Hasn't really been in the side too much this year after being picked up in the mid-season draft. Has been dominant at the VFL level. And, yeah, for me, I reckon it's a relocate. I think you'd get an option. I think you'd get a go somewhere else. Yeah, I don't mind the relocate call. He might have some value there. You might get a, a decent draft pick when Collingwood aren't going to have too many. Um, yeah, relocate or a, a re-sign for one year. Now, this next guy, apologies if I pronounce your name wrong, <laughs> Oleg Markov. 16 games this year since earning a name, a sorry, a spot on the list. Uh, for me, it's an easy decision. He he shows dash. He's been good when he's been called upon. He's a depth player, but it's a re-sign on a, on a year deal. Yeah, I like him. He gives that speed. He's got a good kick. He has a bit of go about him. Re-sign. Yep. He's got one of the best moustaches in the AFL as well. It's a, it's a, it's a ripper. Malaysia. It is. <laughs> Tom Wilson, don't know much about him. Ex-basketballer. Not of the Scott Pendlebury ilk, though. Uh, he's played a couple of games, but at 26, he'll retire. Yep, above that 25 age mark for me, so he's off. Yeah, Trent Bian- Bianco, interesting one. 22-year-old, who's played 23 games since making a debut in 2021. Is very skillful on a wing or sort of a flank option, whether it be forward, flank or halfback. Has just not had any opportunities at Collingwood whatsoever. Relocate. Relocate. Yeah, I don't I don't see him getting any opportunity, but I think he's got value. So he'll he'll relocate. Yep. Uh Trey Rusco played one game in 2023. He played well against our bombers on Anzac Day. Uh he's a backman, but when you've got the likes of Howe, Maynard, Nathan Murphy, who's really stepped up this year, is he going to hang around? Remember, he's only 21 years of age. So is he going elsewhere or is he re-signing on a year deal? Nah, he fits in with the same as the uh, the early ones for me. When you're getting positive mentions about a player at that age with their list, he's uh, re-signed for, for one year. And how good is this last one? Will Kelly, perhaps the hardest bloke to get a read on because he's the son of the CEO of Collingwood. So <laughs> purely from that point of view, I want his old man to go, your delisted son. <laughs> it's like Ned Reeves at Hawthorne. It's the same thing. It's a, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Having the CEO and the son and, and that type of thing. But uh, mm. it's very interesting. The notes say delist a one-year deal, and I think that is probably based on the CEO's decision. So let's leave it yeah. at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, your mob, mate. We move on to the red and black. 
of the Essendon Football Club. So, mate, you're going to have a bit more insight here than I am. There's some big names on this list um, and some big decisions to make for Essendon. I don't think they're looking as threatening as they are had been at the start of the year, so there's going to be some no. big calls made at the end there of is. this year. I'm intrigued to get your thoughts. Um, Alistair Lloyd, I don't know much about him. Took out, their, took out their VFL best and fairest player, so obviously got a bit of ticker about him. Um, what's your thoughts on Alistair Lloyd? Do list. Been, I've been watching a bit of the VFL. Uh, he's not going to make an impact at AFL level for us. I hope, I know we say that this is a re-sign, relocate or retire, but there's a local kid here from Bendigo, Cal McCarty, who's been picked from the local leagues here to play Essendon VFL. I hope Essendon, Essendon take a flyer on him as a rookie. Really, really nice player and one to watch out for. So Andrew Phillips is obviously on the list here, but we know what's happened there. Do you, reckon he's just been given, do you reckon he's been given a bit of the nudge because of the young fella coming through? Is that what's happened? Because yes. he's been serviceable. He's been good. Yeah, he's, he's been really good. Really good. I, re I really like what he's done for our footy club. But with Nick Bryan coming through, they are going to get game time into him. It's That's our window of what we're trying to do now. He's seen the writing on the wall. He's heading home to Tasmania. So congratulations on your 13-year career, 80-game career, Flipper. Yep. Uh, McDonald, a tip and Woody. Um, made a little bit of a comeback. Didn't do what we thought he would. You can't go away and uh, not come back with AFL fitness. Clearly a uh, retire. Yeah, but I think he'll still stick around the AFL uh, in a mentoring role at the Essendon Footy Club. Love that. That's good. Like that a lot. Uh, Zerk Thatcher is a very interesting one. He's obviously played a bit of a role. He's had to play a bit taller than he actually is, had to play a bit mm -hmm. stronger than he actually is. But to me, he still shows a bit of quality. And uh, I think with where you guys are wanting to go, um, he needs to be on the list, in my opinion. Although, Port Adelaide is circling. What's, what's, your, thought, what's your thoughts on mm -hmm. what you would do if you were the Bombers? But then what do you think will happen? What do I think if I'm... In the Essendon chair, I want him to re-sign on a multi-year deal. What do I think is going to happen is that he's going to request a trade to Port Adelaide. Is he an SA boy? Or is there is yes. there a bit of a connection there? Yeah, okay. Yep. Gotcha. Um, Mick McBride, key defender, out of Ireland. Um, no. Yeah, I think it's a D-list, isn't it? It's a retire. Yep. Averages eight disposals a game in the VFL. Your mate here, and clearly you're going to agree with some of the experts out there, Darcy Parrish, most people are saying... Long-term deal uh, mm -hmm. for re-sign on our wording, mm -hmm. re-sign, relocate, retire on the Inside Fantasy Sport Podcast AFL edition. Darcy Parrish, what are you doing? I'm going to ask if you the I'm, same. Sorry, I'm yeah. going to ask you the same question. What are you? What are you doing? And then what will? Uh, <laughs> what do you think Essendon will do? What do I hope Essendon do is relocate him and get some assets back. What do I think is going to happen is that he's going to re-sign long-term, but I don't think he fits in with the best way forward for the Essendon Footy Club. I think he's at 20, what, 26 years of age now. He's in the prime of his career. He offers value to a club that is sniffing around a premiership window. I think we can get some really nice assets back and build on what we have. For me, Ben Hobbs does what he does. And long-term wise, I think we'll be better than Darcy Parrish. This is a big one coming out. No, I, I agree with you. I think this actually just shows the difference between the NBA and the and the AFL. If this was the NBA, they're looking for assets for him and they move him on. There's not even a qualm about it. They go and get what they can get, but this isn't the mm -hmm. NBA. It's the AFL and he'll probably get a long-term deal. Um, this is a big one. Tyson Heppel. Um, you know, we've seen him slow down. He's an absolute stalwart of the footy club, ex-captain, and seems like, again, an all-round legend of a bloke. What are you doing with Dyson Heppel, mate? One year deal. He's been really good this year. Like he's, I was a bit of a critic of his, but he's been really good for us this year, especially when we were playing well. Uh, yeah, one year deal. Harrison Jones, uh, you know, I think he's definitely worth persisting, as some of the notes say. Uh, big upside of the AFL. What are you doing with Harry Jones? Relocating. Ooh. Mm. I, I think that. Uh, yeah. I think we've got quite a few forwards now with Langford, Stringer, Wiedemann, Wright, these sorts of players. Yes, I understand he's young. Yes, he's got some upside. But, yeah, I, I don't really rate the way that he goes about it. So from an Essendon footy club, I think they resign him. But from a personal point of view, I hope they relocate him. Then uh, your mid-season draft, Jaden Hunter. Um, he's obviously had a back injury, key forward. 
Uh, what are they doing with Hunter at the end of the year, mate? Well, that's a, that's another key four that they've just brought in. Played, I think, two games at VFL level, kicked two goals one game and then kicked four the next and then got hurt. He's a waffle boy. He was playing with West West Perth, was it? Uh, oh, I don't want to commit, but I think yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So played some really good footy over there. Looks good as a forward. For me, he's probably got more upside than what Harrison Jones does. Because here's the interesting one. What I did hear about him, you might be right, it might be West Perth. He's one of the ones that signed and said, I only take the six-month option. So there's the six-month option or the 18-month option that they must nominate before they go on the mid-season draft. So he took the six mm-hmm. months. So from what I'm hearing is he's done enough. And most people at Essendon are saying he's done enough to um, yep. to give him another go. Uh, yep. Jai Menzi, um, yeah, he's, I think he's shown a bit for me and a bit of persisting yes. at least a one- or two-year deal. Yep. I hope multi-year deal. He's got a bit of see you next Tuesday about him. I think this guy's the exact same. Massimo Di Ambrosio, um, you know, only played three full games in 2023, mid-season draft, show some flashes. I like him from what, when I've watched some Bombers games. Yeah. You've watched more games than me. What do you like? Yep, like him. Keep him around, multi-year deal. There's one that you've missed there in Kane Baldwin as well. Sorry, correct. I, Kane Baldwin. Oh, mate, I've watched him for the past little bit, probably – Intensely over the last 12 weeks, both at AFL and VFL level. Signed this year, guy to a multi year deal. He has looked awesome down back in Essence VFL side. And when he was filling in when Laverde was out, he did a really good job down back too. Beautiful. And we move on. We talked about Nick Bryan, the young up and coming Ruckman. Mm-hmm. Even my mother said he's a good looking fella. I was like, all right, mum, calm down. Was uh, she Nick watching Bryan. the big horse on the uh, in- Insight Fantasy Sport <laughs> podcast? Or- Mate, I'm trying to get her to vote on the poll between me and uh, the uh, the Matrix at the moment on who's got the better team, but she doesn't know X or Twitter too well, oh, so geez. I'm losing that poll very badly. Anyways, Nick Bryan. Uh, what are you doing with Nick Bryan, mate? He Pretty looks like he's the goods. Yep, beautiful. Yep. Uh, Rhett Montgomery. Tell me a little bit about Rhett Montgomery, mature age rookie out of South Australia. Yep. Does he get another crack? Yes, he does. Not really nice intercept defender at VFL level. He won't get a crack this year, but... I anticipate as a depth player next year, he will get a crack. What are you doing with Will Snelling? Like, he's been a good depth player. He comes on. He actually does a little bit of a job here and there. Um, he clearly stuck in a bit of limbo. Um, will Snelling? Yeah, delist. Unfortunately. Like, I, I like him, but his body's starting to give up on him. Yep. And the last one on the list there is Patrick Voss. Yet today, Boo selected as a rookie draft. He is leading the VFL goal kicking. Worth another crack? He absolutely is. Been speaking about him for a few weeks. And even when I was suggesting that we drop Wiedemann for this guy, I thought he'd go all right. But according to the management at Essendon, especially at VFL level, he just needs to work on his work rate prior to getting that go at AFL level. We move on. We're going to have to up our ante here, mate. We're having good chats for 45 yeah. minutes. We've got about five clubs to go. <laughs> Rio. This, this should be fairly easy because half of these guys I haven't heard of. Yeah, Eric Eric, Eric Benning, tell me about him. D-list. Just move on. Cool. Ethan Stanley. I don't mind Ethan Stanley. I actually think give him a one-year deal. Um, you know, he's been the substitute the last couple of couple of games, um, and I think he's shown enough to, to get another crack. Uh, you're giving Joel Hamling another year as a backup for Alex Pierce, Brendan Cox, Luke Ryan, Hayden the Young. Start of the year, yeah, the start of the year, I would have said no, but I think he's actually come in and shown enough to just go another one-year deal that he's shown that if someone does break down and he needs to come in, he does the job. Uh, ex-premiership defender with the Bulldogs, mm-hmm. I think you give him one more year. Uh, I think this one's fairly easy. Liam Henry? I'm in two minds relocate because he's look he is looking at the moment i think so here's here's what i what i would do is i would give him an option um i would be re-signing him in a multi-year deal but i think he's going to go and chase the money and i'm okay with it and i'll tell you why i don't think his kick is that good and i don't think for a winger his kicks that good he gets a lot of disposals he's a tim taranto he's a afl fantasy skyrocket afl super coach lower not great Okay. So don't overpay is what I'm saying. Uh, tell me about Liam Reddy. Yeah, young Ruckman, ready to go though. I think he's showing a lot of a lot of potential. He's been playing um, been playing well since they've picked him up. Um, hasn't quite got his crack just yet. But again, like I said, you've got to have that tall in your side, especially mm-hmm. when we don't know what's going to go on with um, Sean Darcy. So I'm keeping Liam Reddy in that team as a, a 23-year-old ready to go Ruckman. 
Nathan Wilson, unfortunately, on his way out. Time to go. Time to go, yeah. unfortunately. I think they've got enough people to play that position like we've talked about before, and, and you've got to open up some spots on your roster. He's a D-list mm-hmm. and a, a retirement for me. Retirement, move on. Yep. Uh, two to go for Frio. Sam Sturt, he's been doing a bit for them this year. I like him. Yeah, Sam Sam Sturt just shows he's that mid size forward. He comes in, he does a serviceable job. The, the interesting one with Sam Sturt is when he plays at the waffle level, he basically performs the exact same way he does at the AFL level. So he doesn't like tear the house down, but he does a job. So he's not like banging the door down. But every time he comes up and plays an AFL game, he actually plays like reasonably okay for that sort of third tall mid size forward. Um, so mm-hmm. I'd still be giving him. I'd be giving him a, a two year, one year, two year deal because he's serviceable. And Travis Collier, see you later. Yeah, retired. It's time to go. He's from everything I hear about Travis Collier. He's one of the nicest blokes in the world. But uh, yeah, it's it's time to go. Issues and and time to move on. Injury issues and time to move on. Yep. All right. So we've got uh, four clubs to go. We do Geelong, GWS, Gold Coast, and Hawthorne. Woo. Uh, so Geelong, uh, Cooper White, um, you know, he's impressed in that 2023 preseason, getting some Geelong games off that, you know, VFL off the halfback. What are you doing with Cooper White, mate? Delisting. I agree. They got the Geelong need to make some Geelong are going to have some big moves at the end of this mm-hmm. season for sure. What are you mm-hmm. doing with the Rasava Rabbit Ratagalia? I don't think we need to talk about him. What are you doing with him? Relocating. I think he's, I think he's on one foot out the door to Port Adelaide already. Port Adelaide's name's popping up a little bit here. Uh, Flynn mm. Kroger, um, you know, currently sideline, medium term, knee injury. He's only managed one VFL game as well. He's only 20 years old off the halfback through the midfield. Struggling to get a bit of a game though. Where does Kroger sit with you, mate? Yeah, I think it's a one-year deal purely because of the ageing list of Geelong and they need to keep some youth around. Yep, he sits in that age bracket for me. I'd be keeping him on. Good call. Gary Rowan, uh, it's pretty obvious for me. I think he just goes on one-year deals now for the rest of his career. He does. Uh, Jonathan Segler, obviously coming across from Hawthorne. We know Geelong have their sort of ruck issues there. What are you doing with Segler? Insurance. He's an Andrew Phillips type player. One year deal. Yeah, I think until we know what actual moves they make in this space, he's a sign as it currently lists. I think if they start getting some players, a la Sean Darcy, Brody Grundy, there's a few attached to the Geelong Footy Club. Anyone who's a ruckman who kind of needs a bit more of a go. Um, yeah, so he's a sign until they until they realise what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, Mitch Hardy, I don't actually know much about a Mitch Hardy. Uh, mid-season draftee. Uh, obviously, he was picked... Oh, there you go. He was picked up in the mid-season draft this year. Is he, uh, is he getting a crack? No. Nah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, Oscar Riccardi, son of the Geelong great Peter Riccardi. That's talking a bit of our era here, mate. And the left footers mm-hmm. out at the Geelong Footy Club. Um, elite runner from everything that I've heard. You know, he's had 20 disposals on uh, one occasion in the reserves, booting seven goals as well through 12 games. Um, what's happening with him? I'm not hearing enough about him to keep him. Yeah, I think it's a one year deal given the Riccardi okay. surname at Geelong Land. Uh, Oscar Murdoch, um, another cat yet to make mm. his debut. He's plucked from the 2022 rookie draft, 190 centimeters. Yeah, nice athletic defender, one year deal for sure. Another one of their Ruckmans who gets more of a go than Segler is Reese Stanley, is a uh, non contracted player at the end of the year. What are you doing with Reese Stanley? One year deal. He's just consistent yeah. there at Geelong. Yeah, I think you have to. I think he's definitely the one that I'd give the year deal to. Sam Menegola is an interesting one. Obviously, a WA boy, not getting many games this year. 31-year-old, emergency in the grand final last year, battled some injuries. Um, does he get another year or is he relocating? He's getting another year, but it's going to be at another club. It's For me, I reckon he'd be an ideal fit at Fremantle. That's a good call. That's a Big good call. Big body midfielder. Like that. That's what they need. That's what they need. It's a really good call, actually. Great shout. Sam Simpson uh, played in the 2020 Grand Final of Geelong. Um, he's only played 25 games in five seasons. I think he's got enough talent to sort of get a one-year deal. You one-year deal. Awesome. Yep. Very um, Tom Hawkins. <laughs> what, what? Okay, no, actually, what does Tom do? Does he sign or is it time? He has really dropped off a cliff this year. After mauling... Essendon at the G early on the year, he's been really quiet. I'm going to say he's probably going to resign for one year, but it could be a retire. I think they convince him to stay. 
I think the the danger fields in that, if they get enough players in, they convince him to stay um, to give it one more crack. The only reason why I say retire with him is because I can't see him playing VFL football after the amount of years he's played at AFL level. But I don't think he even will play VFL football. I think they maybe convince him to go, you know what, if you re-sign, we're just getting you through the season. You come and play a few games, you take a week off. You play a few games, you take a week off. Um, Mm -hmm. Give us that one more year. And I could see him doing that. And then I think at the end of next year, there might be some really major major calls at Geelong of, of what comes next. Mm-hmm. Um, and Zach too is the last one. I think he falls under the same boat. I think you've got to give him one-year deal if they're kind of keeping the yeah. band together. One-year deal for Tui. You've got Gold Coast, mate. Oh, I love this club. I think they're going to make huge noise next year. Mm. I did shout out early in the year that I thought they'd play finals and I was laughed at a little bit and... They're not that far away. They am really I are. My, I think, am I getting my, get my six-pack? I think you are. <laughs> I, think I like them too. Done, I like them too. I like them too, mate. All good. So we'll go through uh, just quickly some of their players. Yep. Bodie Ewelland. He was picked round one. him for sure. Yeah. He was, picked, he was picked round one. I think he got in again as a sub later on as well. Yeah. Sign him again. He's only 20. Uh, Brody McLaughlin coming second in the VFL goal kicking. Uh, he's resigning. Sign him up. Resign. Yeah. Everyone's favorite super coach player, Charlie Constable. I'm still on resign. Like I don't. I don't think they need. I think there's some other areas here where they can open up some spots. I think you keep him on the list. I think he's still doing good things. Um, he's he's yeah. versatile. Yeah. Yeah. Resign for me. Connor Blakely. You think his time's done? Disappointed. I'm disappointed he didn't get a crack. So I guess mm. for me, it's yeah, it's retire. It's retire. He's not going to relocate. No one else is going to give him a crack now. So it's um, it's retire. Yeah. The yeah. Wago Oia. Yeah. <laughs> he's a uh, resign. He's, he's a, a resign. Yes. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's quick, isn't he? He is. He's, like he's, fun, he's, fun, one, he's fun to watch. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Jake Stein, G uh, Gold Coast player who they picked up from GWS. Uh, key defender, but hasn't had a crack at AFL level this year, and he's 29 years of age. Going to stick to my rule and say retire. Mm. Uh, James Cetus, I'm retired with that as well. Mature yep. age pick last year, featured twice in 2023, both the sub, 28 years old. For me, retire. Same. Jed Anderson, 29, former Hawk and Kangaroo, hasn't really had a crack. Retire. Same. Good on him. Like, Jeremy, good crack. He, he got yeah. every bit out of his body that he could. He had a crack. Yeah. Jeremy Sharp. Sharp hasn't played at senior level this year, but the WA uh, product has, has attracted previous interest from WA. He was good last year, like really, really fit. And rave reports about him in this preseason that he was as fit as he's ever been and hasn't had a kick. He's this been racking of- up the numbers in the VFL, though. This was one of those last minute trades that didn't uh, that didn't go through in the um in the trade period at the start of the season, which is odd because then they haven't gone and played him, which is really odd. So I think he requests a trade and relocates yeah. to to one of the WA clubs. I think he possibly now ends up at West Coast. Yeah, okay. Uh Casbolt, 34 years of age, one year. One year for me. Yep. Oscar Forkhead. <laughs> Better be careful to say that right. Uh, he's just 20, uh, hasn't really had a crack yet, but I'm re-signing him. Yeah, the age back age barrier for me, re-sign. Yeah. Now, th- this is a sad one for me. Sam yeah. Day, 31 years of age, 149 games. He's only played two games this year. He had one of the most heartbreaking injuries in that dislocated hip that he had. That would be one of the most painful things to go through. I think he's got to retire. I say, I know this doesn't fit in with our re-sign, relocate, retire. I'm going to call this one doctor's decision. Okay. If he's got, if he's getting his body right, I think you're someone that you kind of have there. They need to get this list right. They need to always have their best 22. And if he's playing decent footy, he's in their best 22, or you've mm-hmm. got him as a little bit of backup when that next person goes down. But if the doctor says no, no, then it's sadly time to go. Sam Flanders. Oh, multi-year deal. It's got to be. That's the future. For, but, yeah. Yeah, you go. That's the future. Flanders, Raul, Anderson. In two or three years' time, that could be the best midfield in the AFL. 
if he stays? I guess they've got to have a really good look and without seeing all their contracts and things like that. It's whether they can fit him in and whether someone else comes and offers him money. He started to finally get that role. And I think some clubs are going to definitely circulate. His manager is going to get some serious calls in this off season. Mm -hmm. uh, and Sandy Brock, who I've never heard anything about. 20 years old, key position player. Let's go 20 years old, year give him another year. Yeah. One year re-sign. Yeah, we're, we're nice here on the Inside Fantasy Sport Podcast. One year re-sign. Yeah. Give him the cap. <laughs> just ask Darcy Parrish. He knows how nice I am. Anyway, GWS, mate. Roll with GWS before we get into your hawkers. Mate, Parrish is fine. He's sitting on a mountain of cash, mate. He'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Pruce. I think we all know about Brandon Pruce and the Ruckman, Brandon Pruce. Sorry, Braden Pruce. And, uh, and we also know your views on Braden Pruce. What's happening with Braden Pruce at the end of the year, mate? Uh, I reckon he will be elsewhere as ins as insurance as a backup ruckman. He's clearly third in line behind Briggs and Flynn now. Yep, no, nah, spot on. I think he'll have a good little look around and, and some people might actually take some interest because when he does play, he's not a bad player. Uh, mm -hmm. Callum Ward makes his own choice. What do you deal? Yep. Yep, he did. Did a great job on Bonson Pally, kept him down when they put a bit of mm -hmm. bit of interest into him. I think he's a, a legend. I, I loved when he moved to to GWS in their original team. Uh Cameron Fleeton, uh 21 year old, lacked a bit of opportunity. Um, is it the 21 year old? He's a young defender. Yeah, two year deal. He looks nice. This is one guy I really like, Cooper Hamilton. Um, you know, he's real just a real energy person off the back line there. Um, hasn't made an appearance since earlier in the year because he's had a foot injury. Um, I think he's a multi-year deal for me. I like him. Yeah, so do I. So the Hamilton family's from a little town called Colburn Avon, which is about 20 minutes outside of Bendigo. Really well-liked, respected family. And they rave, or not his family, but people in the Bendigo community rave about Cooper Hamilton and his potential to be a really good player. So I'm going to say multi-year deal. What I'm, what I'm hearing is we're getting him on the pod. That's what I'm hearing. You, you, I hope so. Here. I hope so. <laughs> uh, Daniel Lloyd, um, yeah, important <laughs> asset up forward. Resign yeah, one year? Yeah, one year. Yep. Uh, what's going on with Harry Himmelberg at the end of this season? Yeah, he's just signed a monster five-year deal. Oh, yeah. So he's staying. Yep. yep, he's staying oh, for five yeah, years. We never correct each other. I think it might even be six years, wasn't it? It was huge. Yeah, massive. Uh, might you be right. I back you here, mate. Yeah. Five years. Five years. Um, yeah. yeah, that's right. I think the uh, the day costs was six years. Yeah, um, yeah good good resign. Well done by the club to get that done. Uh, you're right. Monster five year deal with the Giants. Um, Jake Riccardi for me, it's a multi year deal, but he's going to get a lot of phone calls at the end of this year. For me, it's relocate. I think he's coming back to Victoria. Yeah, you, yeah. Actually, that's a good call. I forgot that component of this show. Relocate, see if he can get some value because he's got some value now, and clubs will go after him for sure. Absolutely, he does. Uh, Lockie Keefe, key defender for them. Uh, for me, it's a one-year deal for Lockie Keefe. One-year deal, yep. Matt Flynn, same thing. We have him as the number two ruck. You've got to re-sign him. Absolutely. Does he look anywhere? Does does he does he get any interest from anyone or is he just seen as just a decent backup now to, to Briggs? He's a decent backup. I think when he was the ruckman at GWS, they were, what, two and seven? Briggs comes in and they've won their last eight. Well, they, yep. they lost on the weekend, didn't they? But, yeah. Yep. This is a sad one for me. Uh, Phil Davis, I think he's an absolute legend. I think he's been a quality player for this game, uh, for this team. Um, great captain, great defender. I think if it wasn't him for getting injured and, and having a crack in that grand final, I think GWS would have put up a much better showing against uh, Richmond in that grand final that they made, albeit they got flogged and, and one player doesn't make a huge difference. But... If anyone yeah. does, Phil Davis does for this team. And sadly, I think it will be a uh, retirement for Phil Davis. Yep, he's done, unfortunately. Yep. Um, yeah. But, but we will see him in the media and uh, I think he'll do a good job and have a good career. He seems like a super educated bloke and um, has good things to say about football. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Wade Durkins, uh, it's a bit weird going from like a Phil Davis to a Wade Durkins. Uh, 2022 mid-season draftee. <laughs> Durka, Durka. <laughs> <laughs> We signed Muhammad Jihad to another year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah give him a year. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, mate, we move on to my team. You've got it. Yeah. You can say it and I'll, uh, I'll tell you what the yeah. answer is when it comes to the So Hawks. there's some of these players I've heard nothing about, so be interesting to hear your opinion on them. Brandon Ryan, who's he? 
Haven't you seen him lately? He's been in the team lately. He's been a, a tall forward. They, um, he's, I think he's about 24 years old. He's played the last few games. He's massive. He's nearly 200 centimetres. I think all okay. right, right up there as a um, quite a versatile forward. Um, he's shown plenty, uh, plenty of potential. They picked him up in the mid-season draft. Uh, I'm re-signing him for sure from at least a one-year deal. Yep. Yeah, good. Um, interesting. Chad Wingard. Is he in that window of what Hawthorne are trying to do or would you move him on? I would relocate him, and I love that he's starting to play some good footy. He played an absolute blinder against the Pies yeah, from what did. I saw before the uh, the incident. Um, I think, though, he's a relocate to see if we can get some value. If we can't, then you sign him for one year. Yep. Emerson Jecker. Yeah, I think we're going to have to move Jecker on um, now that you have the players like uh, Brandon Ryan. Um, key forward, he wasn't too bad. Didn't show enough when he came in. He's played extremely well at VFL level. But for me, he's a um, he's a D-list. Yeah, he's a retire. Bendigo's own Fergus Green, re-sign? Yes. Uh, for the same reason that I say Jekka goes, um, for me, Fergus Green gets at least a one-year deal. When he's come in, he's played well. He plays that tough position as a mid-size forward. But he's got a lovely kick on him, kicked a few goals and... Is he in their best 22? Probably not, but um, he gets a one-year deal. Yep. Uh, oh, geez. Finn McGuinness. Give him 10 years. <laughs> yeah, for me, he's, uh, for me, he's a multi-year. A two-year. Two- to three-year player. You know what you're getting from him. He's shown versatility that he can do it as a, as a forward that's sort of staying on someone, a defender that takes the tag role and in the midfield. So for me, it's a two- or three-year deal. You don't overpay him, but um, you give him some confidence that he's in this side. Uh, Finn O'Hara. Uh, no, he, they brought him in as a Category B rookie. Um, just hasn't quite shown enough. For me, it's retired D-list. This one's an interesting one. Jacob Kaczynski, he started as your number one forward. I personally really like him. I think they look a better side with him as a forward that goes in the second ruck than we did with like a Lloyd Meek. I think Lloyd Meek's shown it's kind of like the Grundy Gorn kind of thing. They can't go forward. They just don't have it in them. I think Ned Reeves can kind of do a gorn and go forward, but Lloyd Meeks just a liability where Cozzy can play forward and then go and do a decent job in the ruck. I think they might have a look if there's any value for him. If not, it's it's a one-year deal for me. Okay. Uh, the brother of Caleb Sarong, Jai Sarong. This is a this is another tough one. I think he shows enough potential to give him a one year deal. He'll be on a very low contract, um, but a one year deal because there's a bit of potential there. He's nothing like his brother. I think he's like three times the size of his brother. He's a he's a key position player. So I think okay. just you just hold on to him. Yep. How many years are you giving James Warple? Oh, oh, James Warple can have he can have three years, three four years. Um, I think we're finding his position. I think he's starting to know his limitations. Mm-hmm. As long as he stops trying to be Dusty Martin, he's got a spot in that Hawthorne side for me for the rest of his life. Yeah. Josh Morris? Um, no, nah, unfortunately for me, Josh Morris has got to be delisted. We're going to open up some spots now, and he's one of those ones that will have to go. He's an interesting one as well. A couple of interesting ones here. Lockie Bramble. I think the last the last four are very interesting. Well, no, one's already got the verdict. But um, Lockie Bramble, he was the guy. Um, and he was playing well. But for me, again, they're going to have to look at that list and how many they delist. And sadly, I think he might be one that actually has to go. Weddle has come in and taken that spot. Mm. We've still got CJ, who's not even getting a game off that halfback at the moment as well. Um, I think there's players now that are showing too much in that position. Just like I was talking about with a Daniel Rich, he's a little bit slow, Bramble. I think he knows he can do the job, but we've got other guys that can come in and do it better. So someone might pick him up, but for us, it's it's delisting him just to open up another spot to bring some youth in. Uh, Maxie Lynch, congratulations on retirement. Hopefully all the best with your health moving forward. Ned Long? Yeah, I think he's one of the ones that will have to open up a spot as well. Ned Long just hasn't okay. – he hasn't quite got the game. I think he's only got four games. He's been a sub. Um, yeah, I think with the way that our midfield's going now, he doesn't get in that side. It's, it's a delist and a retire. And for me to finish off – a no-brainer, Tyler Brockman. He's a must-sign. He's a must-sign for me. I love the look of Tyler Brockman. He's got dash. He's got a kick. He can kick goals. There's a lot of interest over here from the West. West Coast are very much circulating. Hence, Hawthorne have probably talked the talk the other way around, going after like a a, um, a Liam Ryan. 
Um, but yeah, for me, they've got to try and sign this guy. Luke Bruce doesn't have too many more years in him. Um, and this guy's got some serious dash and some footy brain about him. So I really hope we get a re-sign of Mr. Number 33, uh, Tyler Brockman, and keep that uh, Cyril Rioli dream alive. Yeah, awesome. Mate, that was good fun. Look, I knew we yeah. have some serious content to go through. Like, Hopefully people enjoyed listening to that, start looking at some players. We'll do it again. These are for our diehard AFL fans. Uh, to start talking about the players. And and maybe there's a few players on that list that people didn't think were there. I know when I went through the notes, I was surprised by a few. I'm really intrigued to see what goes out. We've kept record of what we've said here and mm-hmm. uh, and we'll look back on at the end of the year and see what happens when we do, a, no doubt when we do a trade episode and trade podcast and all those types of things um, sure. to keep the footy knowledge out to our out to our viewers. If you haven't already, click subscribe. Make sure you jump on everything, all things Insight Podcast Network. If you haven't known everything that we do, you've been living under a rock. We do AFL, NFL, NBA. We have BBL coming up soon as well. Make sure you follow along on all our social media providers because we are there bringing you the news daily. Mm-hmm. Any final words from you, Big Horse? No, I think you've wrapped it up all nicely, mate. Jump on the website. The standard squeeze, Insight 15, get yourself 15% off. Beautiful Father's Day gifts there. Until next time, mate, it's been fantastic. This has been the Insight Fantasy Sport Podcast, AFL edition. Peace out. Catch up.